Escarpment Blues by Sarah Harmer here on Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Health care reform may be stalled in Congress, but we turn now to an issue that rarely comes up in discussions about improving our health care system, the relationship between emotional stress and disease, between mental and physical health more broadly, is often considered controversial within medical orthodoxy. But my next guest argues not all aspects of illness can be reduced to facts verified by the strictest scientific techniques. The Vancouver-based Dr. Gabor Mate argues too many doctors seem to have forgotten what was once a commonplace assumption, that emotions are deeply implicated in both the development of illness and in the restoration of health. Based on medical studies and his own experience with chronically ill patients at the Palliative Care Unit at Vancouver Hospital, where he was the medical coordinator for seven years, Dr. Gabor Mate makes the case there are important links between the mind and the immune system. He finds stress and individual emotional makeup play critical roles in an array of diseases, including cancer, heart disease, diabetes, irritable bowel syndrome, multiple sclerosis and arthritis. Dr. Mate is a best-selling author of four books in Canada, including When the Body Says No, Understanding the Stress-Disease Connection. His latest book is In the Realm of Hungry Ghosts, Close Encounters with Addiction. Uh, we spoke with him about that book a few weeks ago on Democracy Now! Today we explore the costs of hidden stress. Dr. Gabor Mate joining us today from Vancouver, Canada. Welcome to Democracy Now!, Dr. Mate. Um, let's talk about this connection between stress, the mind-body connection. You know, the traditional medicines of China for 3,000 years, the Ayurvedic medicine of India, and the tribal shamanic medicines of all cultures around the world have always taken for granted that mind and body can't be separated. Now, Western medicine has cleaved the two apart for really th uh, 2,000 years. Uh, Socrates already uh, criticized the doctors of his day for separating the mind from the body. And the irony, in fact, the tragedy is that now we have the Western science that shows incontrovertibly and in great detail that mind and body can't be separated, and so that any attempt to do so leaves the medical practitioner short of many tools to help clients, and of course it leaves patients short of what they need for their own healing. Uh, healing. The, the point now is, is that the emotional centers of the brain which regulate our behaviors and our responses and our reactions are physiologically connected with, and we know exactly how they're connected with the immune system, the nervous system, and the hormonal apparatus. In fact, it's no longer possible uh, scientifically to speak of these as separate systems, as if immunity was separate from emotions, as if the nervous system was separate from the hormonal apparatus. There's one system and they're wired together by the nervous system itself and joined together by chemical messengers that they all secrete. And so that whatever happens emotionally has an impact immunologically and vice versa. So for example, we know now that the white cells in the circulation of, our, of the blood can manufacture every hormone that the brain can manufacture and vice versa. So that the brain and the immune system are always talking to another. So in short, we have one system. The science that studies it is, is called psychoneuroimmunology. And scientifically, it's not even controversial, but it's completely lacking for medical practice. What do you mean, Dr. Mate, by the mind body, by the Bermuda Triangle? Oh, well, the Bermuda Triangle uh, is, is that the research is done. For example, let me give you a couple of examples. Uh, three years ago, or four years ago, a study presented at the Heart and Stroke Foundation's International Congress on Women's Health, a study that was written up in the online version of a major North American medical journal called Circulation, showed that women, over a 10-year period, that followed 1,700 women, over a 10-year period, women who were unhappily married and didn't express their emotions were four times as likely to die as those women who were unhappily married and did express their feelings. In other words, the non-expression of emotion was associated with a 400 percent increase in the death rate. And this study was done in the States, part of a major population study. Now, you'd think that study would send every physician in North America trying to figure out the mind-body connection. But these studies get published and they sink without a trace. There was a study two years ago that showed that uh, children of mothers who are stressed and depressed are themselves, the children, are more likely to have asthma. Again, the mind-body connection. You think that study alone 
it would send every physician running to figure out the mind-body connection. But again, these studies are done, they disappear without a trace, and they have no impact on medical practice. And that's what I mean by the Bermuda Triangle, is that we have the research, we just don't pay attention to it, it's just like if it never happened. You 